going on, people? Over in a few minutes, you all y'all get in, and uh, we're gonna start. Hope everybody's doing well. Hope everybody's having a good Saturday. And, uh, just wanna take some time today and uh, go over a couple of things with you. And I hope you're having a, a successful morning thus far. Uh, this is my second leg. Uh, my first six hours from 6.30 to 12.30 um, is in Greenville on Saturday mornings. And then from 1.30 to about 6 o'clock, 6.30, it's spent about 35, 40 miles away in Spartanburg, and um, that's my Saturday, okay? Uh, but that's what we do, and that's how we make it, make it go. But today I want to talk to you um, uh, real quick about the three ways to invest in yourself, the three major ways to invest in yourself, um, because a lot of times uh, barbers and stylists uh, don't do all three things. They do two things, they might do one thing, but rarely do you see barbers and stylists do all three things. And for the most part, that is the reason why a lot of barbers and stylists don't have the success that they want and need at in, in the beginning. Um, you know, so let's let's go over the first one. The first thing that you must do to invest in yourself as a barber or as a stylist or as a barber coming in or as a stylist coming in is to invest into your education. You, you gotta get the education, so you gotta get your books, you gotta get your study, you gotta you gotta go out and study and get all the information you need so you can get the information you need. Once you get the, your, your test under your belt, and you passed it, and you have your, you have your license. It does not stop there. Continued education is very important because it keeps you up on the latest trends, the latest styles, the latest equipment. I mean, the technology is always changing. So you need to be up on everything you can be up on. You know, when it comes down to educating yourself to be a better barber or a stylist. So if you're not you know, seeking out classes, if you're not, you know, trying to learn techniques that you didn't learn in barber school, trying to get additional information about different uh, procedures, uh, then you're only hurting yourself, you know, I mean, you're not hurting, you know, the barber next to you, you're not hurting, you know, uh, the teachers, you're hurting yourself, you're depriving yourself of, of the kind of income that you'd like to have, you can't do certain things because you don't have the, the knowledge. Uh, the second thing that keeps uh, barbers uh, from going to the next level, and the second thing that barbers need to do to invest to, uh, to be better is to invest in their equipment. You got to have good tools. Can you cut with old tools? Can you cut with outdated tools? Absolutely. But it's a whole lot different. It's a whole lot better. It's a whole lot easier. You get better quality work done when you got quality clippers, quality trimmers, when everything is sharpened correctly, everything's adjusted correctly, when you have good tools, your shears are sharp, everything is the way it's supposed to be. It makes your job a whole lot easier and it takes time off of your, your, uh, your work so that you might spend, you know, 10, 20 minutes, 10, 15 minutes on a lineup when you have bad clippers or bad trimmers. But if you get good trimmers and they adjust it correctly, that lineup could go five minutes and you'd be done. You know, it depends on the, the uh, quality of your tool. So you need to invest in good tools. Don't have broken tools tools with missing teeth, you're only going to cause uh, a problem to your customer, 
you're gonna cut somebody, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna have somebody with marks on the back of their neck and around their, their forehead. So if you have clippers and tools that are not adequate, they're adequately uh, sharpened and uh, outdated, uh, used to the place where you can't even, you know, get a good cut going, something's not making a loud noise, you need to go ahead and invest some money in new clippers, trimmers, shears, etc. Do not try to do business and think you're going to get top dollar from people, and you're and you're cutting them with with t you know tools that are outdated, tools that are, are malfunctioning. It's just a problem for yourself. All right. The last thing that I'm going to tell you hurts a lot of barbers and stylists, and this is the main thing that causes a lot of barbers and stylists not to be able to make money. The first two will put you in, put you in a place where you can make money. The first two will prepare you to make money if you got good education and you invest in your tools. Most um, barbers will invest in their tools. Most barbers will go to barber classes you know, and, and get more classes to learn how to cut different types of hair, you know, uh, uh, hair textures. So most barbers will do that. You know, I'm not going to say most barbers, but uh, many barbers will do that, you know. So the only thing that stops a lot of barbers from growing in this business, and I'm going to tell you straight up, is that barbers are very cheap when it comes to advertising and promoting themselves. The most a barber will do most barbers will do is go get business cards and maybe from time to time, you know, um, uh, do a little fly or something here or there. But for the most part, you will not see barbers spending money outside of going to get business cards. And for the most part, you know, that's that's nothing. You know, you can, you know, a business a business card nowadays is after the fact. A business card nowadays is is only used after they found you, and now they at the shop. You give them a haircut, and now you give them business cards to have for their own information to pass off to somebody else. But they've already found you electronically, for the most part. A lot of things are done now electronically. They find you on the internet. They find you on Facebook. They find you on Instagram. You know, so now you want a hard copy of your information in their pockets so they can just pass it off to somebody else. So to have business cards only is only a foregone conclusion. You know, they already see you. They already know you. What you want to do now is to be able to increase your um, your clientele and, uh, and, and um, you know, not just, you know, through people that, give word of mouth or you know tell people about you but by you having new breathing clients coming in you got to have new breathing clients one of the things i said this morning was that after this pandemic a lot of people a lot of barbers have lost clients you know a lot of their clients have either moved some are still afraid to come to the barber shop uh you know some maybe have found new barbers when when you were not cutting they went somewhere and, and got a barber that was cutting underground and now they're going to stick with them. So a lot of people don't have the clients they had before the pandemic, before the shutdown occurred. So now that the shutdown has occurred and we have been opened up again, um, some of us are saying, hey man, I don't see my clients. People that was with me for a while, um, they're no longer with me. And I'm not going to go into the reasons why. You know why. Um, I'm not going to go into those reasons. You just got to go ahead now and step up your game. But for the most part, for you to get new clients, you're going to have to go about getting uh, getting out there and promoting yourself. I do not. And, and, and years ago, if you look at my old, my old information, my old sales talks, it did talk about, you know, knocking on doors and, and handing out flyers in the mall and doing things like that, you know, pressing the flesh, and that's what that's what we did ten years ago. You know, you know, we did that because, you know, <clears throat> Instagram and Facebook, 
and all these other uh, social media outlets and platforms weren't, um, you know, that popular with barbering and, 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 and getting clients. So we did what we had to do. But now to leave the barbershop for an hour and a half to go try to give out flyers, standing up one person at a time, is almost crazy when you can go into your, your on your Facebook account and just uh, uh, spend ten fifteen dollars and get a whole 25, 25, 30 mile radius of where you are and hit thousands of people in a matter of minutes. And all you gotta do is just post your work. It just makes more sense. It's more cost effective, and it's not going to cause you to have to spend money running all over town, being at the mall, being over here, being over there. Because remind you know, remember when you when you're out of the shop, you're not in the shop. So if you're out of the shop giving out flyers, and somebody comes in, you're gonna miss them. So. You know, being able to uh, post your work and to advertise via uh, Facebook, via uh, Instagram, and still be in the shop and get so much exposure and a big bang for the buck, it just makes sense to invest that 10 to $15. The money, the same money that you would probably spend uh, making flyers, um, Using gas to go around and take these flyers, standing up, you know, talking to people because you can't talk to everybody. You got to talk to everybody one at a time. So he, he, you got what you you talk to maybe twenty people, you know, in in maybe what two hours. So now you spend two hours talking to people about your business. Will you get some uh, response? Absolutely, you, you'll get you'll get response. People people will um, people will probably come to see you. From the response, it won't be it won't be as great, but you will get some response. But the best way to get your response now is to be able to uh, touch a lot of people. It's 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 in the number game. So the more people that you expose yourself to, expose your work to, expose your name to, expose uh, your uh, your barbershop to, the more people you will have contact you about future future haircuts but you have to invest the money into the advertising yes you can do some free Facebook advertising but you can also take 10 to 15 dollars and and pay for uh, centralized advertising right in your own neighborhood right in your own area within the 10 15 20 30 30 40 mile radius and people in your radius in your area can see your work, can see your advertisement, can find out where you work at, can find out how close you are to them, and it's beneficial to you. It's not going to be a waste of time and a waste of money. Stop being uh, stingy when it comes to advertising who and where you are. You know, it doesn't make sense to me. You know, if you if you spent money on tools, you spent money on clippers, you spent money on going to school, you spent money on education, but you don't spend any money comparatively, you know, comparatively on where you are. So people can find out where you are. You know, so you have to spend money on advertisement. You have to spend money on promotion. You don't have to spend a lot of money, but you gotta spend some, okay? So don't just spend money on you know um business cards and think you've done you, you've done a good job because business cards once again are only good really for after the fact after they come to you already or maybe in a social situation you at a party or something like that or at the gather, gathering or something or maybe a, a, some kind of a, a mixer and then you just you know you, you're talking to people and you happen to give your card like that you know I mean Business cards is good for that kind of situation, but to build the business faster and to build it, you know, more to pinpoint who you want to talk to, who wants to talk to you, who wants to get a haircut from you, you have to go through social media. Social media is the new way of making or building your business. You cannot think for a second that you're going to build your business faster one by one 
by word of mouth only, by giving out a flyer, giving out cards, and think that you're going to build your business quicker. I tell you, I've not seen it yet. Everybody that goes to the social media and builds their business by posting their work, by posting where they, where, where they work at, you know, showing, you know, who they are, getting, getting familiar with people, letting people see who they are, those people build clientele at least three to four times faster. You know, what I'm telling you now, you can build, a, uh, if you do it correctly, you can build a clientele of about 50 to 100 in maybe a month. It just, it just, it's just a matter of you um, taking the correct steps and then, and, and then you know, uh, impacting that area. Once people see your work, you know, especially if you do good work, you know, it's just going to be a matter of time before they contact you. Look, people, you know, uh, understand, you know, because there's no shortcuts. Yeah, we, we would hope the barbershop has good walk-ins and all that. But at the end of the day, you're a business for yourself. You're responsible for your own business. You're responsible for your own walk-in clientele, for your own people coming to you. If you get some walk-ins, fine, that's gravy. But you should not sit around waiting for somebody to come to the door and think you're going to build a business. That's crazy. That's crazy. You're, nobody else is responsible for your business but you. Okay? He's responsible and the owner is responsible to provide you with a clean place, you know, to work and some place that's conducive for people to come in and and to uh, get a service. But really, they are not responsible unless you are an employee, you know, to, to get you the clientele you need. So, if you're interested in building a good, solid foundation of clients, then you must do the things necessary. Get your education, have good tools and implements, and make sure that you invest every day on some level in your promotion, in who you are, building your brand, letting people know who you are, where you are, where you can be found. You should spend at least an hour a day promoting yourself on Instagram, Facebook, and that's free. You don't have to pay them money for that. But if you're not spending an hour a day promoting yourself, promoting your work, showing people what you can do, who you are on some level, letting them see the kind of person you are, and when I say that, the kind of person you are, let them see you, you know, you know, interact in the shop, or you know, maybe go out and, and go to the store, or maybe talking to your friends. Let them see that you're you that you're just like them. You know, you might. You know, even let them see you have lunch one day. It's just you know little things that give people the understanding that you are you know you're a normal human being just like them, and for some reason they might gravitate to you just because of where you shop. You know, understand? So it's that's why he calls social media, and so you're building a warm market of clientele, of clientele that think they know you already. So when they finally come into the barbershop to get a haircut. In their mind, they know you. They know where you work. They know your, your name. They know the people, maybe the people that work next to you. They know their name because they've been following you on, on Facebook. They've been following you on YouTube, Instagram. And so now they have a certain knowledge about you. So that's how you use social media to make a warm market. People who want to be around you, who want to be, um, who want to patronize you who want you to uh, give them the services they need. Look, take care of yourselves. Enjoy your Saturday. But don't forget to invest in yourself. Peace.